I'm John Goliatino. I am Richard Gunsel. I'm Bobo Potzner. I'm Risa Minikin. And I'm Doris Hanley. Welcome to 30 Minutes. Hi, I'm John Galitino. I'm your host this, this evening, and we're going to be uh, talking to an uh, old friend of the show. Uh, the Rock and Re Rescue people are back. We're going to be uh, uh, talking about their uh, latest um, exploits and um, uh, good fortunes. Uh, and uh, we've got Marla uh, Valentine, uh, Julie Saloni, and then we've got a new associate, James Scova, okay, all um, fellow um, Irishmen, we'll put it that way. So, without further ado, let's bring them on, and, and they can say their uh, tell us about remind the thirty thousand people that are in this area that weren't here a couple of years ago, uh, of, you know, about uh, what they do and uh, or where they came from, and, and then what what they're currently doing. Uh, so, uh, let's start with Marla and uh, go forward. Hi, I'm Marla Valentine. Yeah, okay. And um, I'm going to actually turn it over to start with Julie Cialoni. Julie Cialoni is the founder of Rock and Rescue, and she'll tell you a little bit about where we started. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, so Rock and Rescue uh, began uh, just as a uh, grassroots effort to involve uh, music and animals and put the two together. And now we've uh, grown enough and changed our, our methods uh, and learned along the way. And we are now a large 501c3. And our uh, transition from just something grassroots has become more of a mission to, as our mission statement is, that we rescue pets to rescue people. All right, very good. Uh, I, I I had forgotten that you didn't do this as a partnership. You did this, I, I, you know, Julie. You started this, and then Marla came in as a, you know, she became uh, like a St. Paul situation. You know, you <laughs> came and you were struck by lightning and decided to join the group. <laughs> so to tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, what were you doing before you came along and had your St. Paul uh, uh, situation, you know, with the lightning or whatever, you know, you, you <laughs> so, this is this is more beneficial than uh, what you were doing. So I was working as a director of social services in um, a skilled nursing facility prior to meeting Julie. Um, Julie had started Rock and Rescue, and she just started it up in South Salem as a 501c3. I started fostering and volunteering, and then Julie and I decided to go full force into rescue, and we chose to work with as work as a rescue saving people to saving animals to save people so our mission is that we save pets to save people and we focus on animal assisted therapy and placing pets into um, individual and family homes as well as into uh, into clinicians um into clinicians homes clinicians um workplaces as well all right so it's it's essentially the same but you've got the 501 c3 which is very important today you know, yeah so that's very important uh, uh, addition now i'm wa wondering because i hadn't met james before i'm wondering what he has brought to the table uh or is he just like the referee between you two. <laughs> sure that happens. You he's not, oh, he's, he's, he's the oh, eye candy. <laughs> <too far here. laughs> so I, I've actually been volunteering with the organization since 2014. So I've been around so long that they decided to finally start paying me, I oh, guess. They, they decided to bring you on, I see. Right. It was, it was like a six or seven year trial to make sure it was going to work out okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm the company handyman. I do. 
Oh, uh, I see. Like email marketing. I do some online stuff for them. Uh, we had to fix the website earlier today. I communicate with the adopters. Uh, I work, I'm building a donor program now. So it's kind of a jack of all trades type of thing. I'm the driver, the garbage man, and kind of whatever else they have to need to do on that day. <laughs> Somebody's got to do cleanup. And that's what I usually do, even when I'm the, the head of the group. <laughs> I'm the cleanup man. Well, I'm a social worker. I, I'm always doing cleanup. Yeah, I was going to say, cleanup is something we all do uh, on oh, a daily okay. basis. So it's kind of split amongst all of us. Okay. So are you, so you essentially are bringing in pets, primarily cats, right? But you do have yeah. some dogs. Are you maybe you're not doing as many dogs as you were, but you were doing some dogs. So we, this year, this year we've um, expanded um, significantly into uh, dogs. Um, this weekend, for example, we have two puppies coming in this weekend, um, and uh, we've done a number of dogs this weekend. We've also um, heard uh, a cry of help from New York City that's had a lot of pocket pet uh, issues. So we've been helping with um, bunnies and hamsters. And probably the biggest one right now is uh, guinea pigs. They're being found in garbage cans and on doorsteps, uh, r running around in our apartments, and uh, every single one is pregnant. So we've got a lot of cute little baby, baby call them our little baby piggies. But yes, the, the answer is we do more cats. But, than we do. but cats right. are still our focus, yeah. And our focus with our therapy program is also with our cats, although we do um, have now a therapy bunny named January who um, has been coming to the animal assisted therapy groups. We're still doing the nursing homes. Um, it's picking up again with um, after since COVID. And um, we meet monthly at Anne's Place, which is a 501c3 um, charity as well. It is a community center for individuals with cancer and for their loved ones. So we meet the first Tuesday of every month um, we limit the participation to six individuals and we bring our, we're doing our kitten therapy. So we're, we're bringing the kittens, we're bringing the cats, and um, now we're also bringing our, our therapy bunny. Right. And you basically situate them with the, with the people and the people, you know, pass that time with the, the animals and they're, they're much more calm after they're done with their time with the animals yeah the whole idea of, of yeah the and it's also a di it's it's a wonderful diversion from what they're experiencing in their in their day-to-day -day lives so it's a way for them to um to just step outside of their you know everyday routine and just have fun and enjoy it's we do the, um, the the swaddling of the kittens where they hold them but we also everyone gets a toy you know, the kittens are running around and they're playing with them and they're running, you know, underneath the wheelchairs and they're, they're climbing up the, uh, the individual's legs. It's, uh, it's, it's exciting, it's fun, and it's, a, as I said, a wonderful diversion. I hope those are the smaller cats that don't have claws yet. <laughs> those are the tiny little the tiny okay. little kiddos. The little ones, okay. The, the the bigger ones, we dress them up in, in costumes and um, they're, they're pretty comfortable just um, sitting on a participant's lap. Yeah, the bigger the bigger cats that we bring are going to be more of a, of a comfort pet that is sitting on a lap so someone can pet them and brush them. But they're, they're really just sitting there snuggling, giving them hugs. Um, they're much more gentle uh, and, and mature pets uh, that, that can do different, different kinds of therapy, moving small motor skills by petting them even just the sound of them purring, the louder sound is 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 comforting to many people. All right, I, I what I was referring to is uh, the the larger uh, cats have have some flaws. Unless you're clipping them on a regular basis, they they could possibly hurt the uh, you know the patients there, the, the residents of the uh, of the homes. But I, I think in order to uh, to go in there, they they do have to get clipped. Right. You know what, though? See, this is the thing that the cats that we bring, we have two we have two therapy cats. We have Hudson, who is a 14 year old Wedgehead Siamese. 
And we have Fifi, who is a um, one and a half year old Persian. Yes, um, I'm sorry, Derp, Dutch is Derpy Derp. These two cats, you know, you will, they will never pull out their claws. And um, they've been fully temperament tested. These are true therapy animals. Um, you put them on a lap and they sit. They, they don't scratch, they, they don't pull, they don't bite. Um, they are perfectly content to just sit on someone's lap and um, be coddled. Most cats won't use their claws. Most cats, I mean, a cat has to actually retract their claw. It's not like a human that's the claws out all the time. It actually has to come out. And most, most cats that we bring are, are cats that just, they don't use them unless they ha are climbing, you know, or doing something or, or, or just stretching. Uh, in, in general, these are not cats that, that are going to ever you know, put their claws out to any human. And by the same token, we do clip everybody's nails that come through. Yeah, everybody, so everybody's nails get clipped. That's yeah. also this is also healthy husbandry. You should really get your cat's nails clipped every two to three weeks. So the the, the places that you go to are nursing homes, but also uh, um, the in between uh, the other type of homes. Uh, you know, they're um, well. Right now, we're doing Anne's place. So you go to the camp. It, it, it's a community center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's the main yeah. mm -hmm. main place you're going. You're, you're not. And then there. remember, we do we do lots of adoptions for with animals that are going into homes, um, where an animal is needed for in in home therapy. Okay. And that's one of the biggest things right now, John. Is uh, we're on the lookout for a, a facility where we can expand the programs. So because right now, all these programs are off site. We go to the nursing home, we go to Ann's place, and the, our biggest interest is being able to have uh, enough rooms where we can have therapy rooms on site and offer those same services where people come to us and, to feel better. And, and, and while we're at the end of uh, COVID here, you know, it's getting better and better as time's going by. Yeah, it might be a little easier to get into the homes because access is, uh, you know, you're, you can only have access to this particular room, and you know, and the, it's because of the, uh, the, the the lasting order on COVID. But that they're uh, they're uh, opening up all over the place. So I think in another month it's going to be so you can go anywhere you want, as opposed to just being restricted. But I can see the benefit, you know, for people that are there and uh, day in day out. They, they have some activities, but. Uh, this uh, this gives them a world of joy, you know, um, uh, to have, have the animals come in. And then, uh, is there anything you as you you select the animals, that, you know, wherever you get them, to bring them in and clean them up and everything else? Uh, what is the type of screening that you go through when somebody's looking for a cat? Uh, in other words, uh, do you screen the family in some way or other? You, uh, you, you check their fi uh, financials and you also check other things. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just the. Julie, well, Julie is our matchmaker, and the pandemic truly affected our rescue um, in immeasurable ways. The number of therapy um, adoptions that we did skyrocketed. Um, we're getting requests for. For, for cats to go into homes with young adults um, and children, we're seeing an increase in suicidal ideation, depression, eating disorders, and anxiety. Children who um, have been homeschooled and are, are, are nervous now to go back into um, the community, um, we're seeing um, what people are calling school aversion. It's um, it, it's hit us hard, and it's hit our volunteers, as well as um, we see it in our in, in, in our applications. Um, but getting back to your to your question, Julie is our matchmaker. Um, she is the um, she is the 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 the, 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 the gateway. gateway. So I'm going to Julie will tell you a little bit about how we how we how we match our applicants with our cats so um and it's it's a a, a process that's that's both um something that is custom done and also um online we always tell people go to our website and then go see our adoptable animals on pet finder 
first and see if see if any of them you know make make, make you feel happy uh and if um that's you know if they see something like that then they apply for that animal um i'll read their applications uh and i'll go through to make sure obviously there's red flags on on people's applications that i've always said i'm i'm, I'm looking for uh and then there's also families that are i might say something in addition that might say wait a second maybe this cat isn't the right one but this cat i have that maybe isn't even on online yet is going to be even better for them because x y and z their family makeup needs a cat that is more playful or less playful um you know it depends on on the personality we already um pre-screen all the animals before they come in uh in terms of health and personality so i know those animals i'm i'm custom picking them so when as i'm custom picking the animals i'm also thinking about the family that's going to go with the, the animals going to go to that person and then it just kind of comes together uh, and then, uh, and then we have a really amazing, uh, low return rate. So that's, what's so impressive. And, uh, this, it happens and there's magic there. And a lot of people are really happy and that's, I guess, the most important part. Well, I think that interview process also helps because you yeah, of course. Well, keeps these people a little more, uh, uh, you know, frisky, you know, they need a cat that's a little more of a personality as opposed to one that goes in, eats, and just goes and sits on the couch. You know, that's well. Some families, if they don't ever have, they don't have another pet at home, um, and they look, they're looking to adopt a young kitten. Uh, we, you know, we strongly advise they get they adopt in pairs. Um, despite the people who are you know expert cat owners, a solo cat should be more of an older cat that's been socialized. So a lot of our applicants, if they're looking for little ones, um, they'll end up getting two. Which is always nice because it's double the love. Okay. Um, so uh, during the last roughly year or so, uh, is has there been anything new about the way you, you operate? I mean, are you still getting uh, the majority of your cats from the southern climates where there's there's more reproduction of, of cats as opposed to the, the, the north? That's the way I understood it. Maybe I got it wrong. Yeah, absolutely. James knows our numbers better. Yeah, we, we get probably close to 90% of them from down south, where Kentucky, Alabama, a couple other states, those are the two biggest that we have our relationships and, and partnerships with some shelters down there. And in, in the long run, a lot of the folks down there don't believe in spaying and neutering animals. So there's a proliferation of cats and dogs and, and pretty much everything. And uh, that's how we got our niche to saving cats because there was a lot of dogs being saved at the time. And we knew that the cats were being euthanized. And that's where we stepped in to start saving them and bringing them up here and getting them bedded, fixed, and off to adopters in the Northeast. It's a worthy cause. Um, so, do you have any like case studies of uh, they would have? Uh, euthanized X number of uh, cats that you didn't bring in? I can tell you, just from being with Julie and Marla over the course of time, there will be a week where uh, there were some sick cats and they had uh, some kind of thing and they were going to sit, they are going to kill 150 cats unless they took them all. And they would sit there crying all night and they took as many as they could. They would take 90 cats in in one week just to save them from dying, whether we have adopters or not. So. And a lot of these times, cats are dying constantly if we're not saving them. So the numbers, the numbers are huge, and I, I can see the toll it takes on them sometimes. Uh, you know, especially when a sickness goes through the shelter and it's it's relatively minor, but the shelter just euthanizes everyone. These are death row cats that we're saving. Um, there is um, an overabundance of of cats and kittens in the south. It's it's a terrible cycle. They don't stay in neuter. The cats are indoor outdoor cats and because it's warm, the um, you know, they, they it's it's just one big cycle. There is um, now a push for stay and neuter in the south, and you're seeing more and more trappers who are going out and trapping these cats and bringing them to the shelters. The problem is that, you know, there there can be two hundred cats that go into um, the shelter in just one day and um, they there's no space for them. So any cat that gets a sniffle is going to be euthanized and for space so that they can put another cat in it. And 
once all of the cages are filled, the, the cats go into the into um, you know it, it get get slated for euthanasia. So we temperament test. We work with our partners in the South. We we pull only the sweetest of the sweet. The temperament testing starts in the South. It starts in the shelters and with the clusters. It starts with um, testing how they are with other cats, how they are with dogs, how are they with children, how are they with being with being handled? Can you pick them up? Can you touch their their legs, their bellies, their tail? Um, those are areas that some cats don't like to be touched. It doesn't mean that we're not going to take a cat that um, doesn't have a amazing temperament, but it it but it 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 does help us to determine who we are going to take. If there are going to be 50 cats that we are going to pull and there are 100 cats there, we are going to pull the 50 that are amazing. And we do not um, discriminate when it comes to whether they're long haired, short haired, you know, they've got four legs, old or young. We pull 14 year old cats that are amazing because we know that they can go into a therapy situation. We pull cats without ears. We've pulled um, many what we call tripods, um, cats that have had amputations, um, cats that are blind, cats that are deaf. If they meet our temperament testing, then those are the cats that we are going to pull first because our clientele, the um, the the communities, the the, the individuals in, in our community that are looking to adopt through Rock and Rescue. They are looking for an animal that is um, going to, you know, help bolster their um, their their psychosocial well-being, and um, and they don't really care about looks as much as they care about is this cat going to snuggle up with me when I'm sad. Some of the um, the the videos from the the testing that we do, I use um, when I'm. Uh, posting onto pet finders so that people or when I'm I'm, I'm showing certain cats to families um, because I, I want to show them that listen the reason why you know maybe cat cat a is not as good for you is because cat B is this way with the dog and cats and kids and look at these videos how they are when their bellies being rubbed and people go oh my god you're right like that's the cat for me so that that helps in my matchmaking process those videos of temperament testing because it really shows you that we push this cat to its limit and yet look how amazing it is and then when people get it they'll say they say i, I can't believe this cat is is so sweet and and so wonderful to me it, it really shows you know what it what it took for us to figure that out for them um and the animals you know they're just naturally this way sometimes um, the whole the whole myth of the cat you know trying to kill you when you sleep and 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 can't wait for you to leave the house is untrue. If COVID has proved anything, cats just like dogs are love you to be at home. They can't wait for you to be there just as much as their dog their dog partners. Um, and you know that's how that's how everything for us you well, know, they balances get, out. They get lonely too when they're by themselves. You know? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I I I, I was neglectful and not asking you because i'm sure there's people out there that might be watching you for the first time and uh and saying why do they call it rock and rest rescue did they have something to do with you know rock music or uh you, you want to explain that a little bit julie <laughs> Absolutely. So um, when I first started the rescue, um, I was doing a lot of, uh, I was a well-known photographer and I worked with many uh, famous uh, musicians and uh, they would sign collars and then the collar would actually go back. Uh, we would find an animal that was in need that might maybe wasn't getting noticed as much uh, with a rescue and then the collar would go to that animal. We rename the animal, we'd market the animal out and say, hey, listen, um, here's if you adopt this animal you also will get the collar um obviously they have to be screened and everything just in the same way and it really helped those animals that might not have gotten some attention to get just a little more attention and the and the, the musicians were really happy about it uh, we've restarted um all that now that that music music is coming back post covid and we had uh, our first rock and rescue artist for this year was howard jones and he signed uh, some collars at the wall street theater in connecticut and um uh, we had a dog already adopted and the collar went to them 
and we have another cat in in foster that is also a How Mr. Howard Jones, and he'll be up for adoption as shortly as well. And uh, frankly, John, I think what that's really the music will, is what put us on the path to the rescue pets, the rescue people, because we realize that music is just soothing and calming and therapeutic, and it just took us in the first step to becoming uh, the rescue pets, the rescue. Well, it, it, it originally soothes the savage beast, but it Absolutely. also soothes them human beings, you know. <laughs> so, uh, at this point in time, why don't we uh, uh, mention how people can get a hold of you, your, uh, uh, you know, a telephone number that they could possibly use to call you on questions having to do with this program, and, and an email, uh, that would be fine. If there's a website, yeah, maybe you can mention it this time. If, and mention it yeah. twice because there's people that are, that are probably running all over the place trying to find a pen and a pencil or whatever. <laughs> uh, well, our, the, best was, way to, the best way to reach us really is through the website. And if you go onto the website, there's also a, a contact us and um, we'll get all messages there. And our website is easy. It's www.rnrpets.org. Okay. And, and you can also find us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and, and, TikTok. and TikTok. We have a lot of really fun videos on TikTok. Oh, okay. That sounds good. All right. So uh, maybe we, we can do a summary now of um, what you want people to remember because we've got like about two minutes left. And mm -hmm. by the time you go through the summary, or each of you, you could do a summary about. Sure. Don't forget about this, or don't forget about that, or you know. I mean, the, the truth is, uh, we're, we're happy just making other people happy. And in the beginning, it started out a little bit here, a few cats here and there, and we've grown to an organization that actually does over 2,000 adoptions per year, in addition to the therapy programs that we were speaking about earlier. And uh, the, the reason that I wanted to come on board, why I've been doing this with, with them for so many years is because the happiness that I see in other people's faces, I never got that anywhere else. And that kind of made me happy. And that's that's why I love it. Um, it makes us happy to make everybody else happy. Okay. Uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. I, I guess- Yeah, you, I'm, uh, just the- um, Like the cleanup mm -hmm. man. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the um, this year we're, we're starting, you know, really, um, full force, um, all different animals, all different critters. This weekend, we have what we call big trucks. So if you're looking to adopt um, everything from a puppy to cats, to bunnies, to guinea pigs, they're up for adoption this week. And we, uh, we're, we're continuing uh, branching out and hopefully this year we'll have some new therapy partners as well. All right, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having us. Signed. It's time Thanks, to John. wrap it up. And Marla, you have to hold that thought the next time. <laughs> no problem. All right, so uh, thank you for coming on the show and thank the viewers for tuning in uh, 30 minutes. Uh, tune in next week, same time, same station. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. All right.